This is a podcast about light and electron microscopes. So to start with, which do you think took these pictures? Light microscope or electron microscope? Well, hopefully you know that a light microscope is not able to magnify as much as an electron microscope. So when we're looking at these kind of pictures, we're looking for what we perceive to be huge magnification and also detail. And the two key terms here are magnification and resolution. And I'm hoping that you will remember that having looked through microscopes yourself, that these cells here are plant cells. You can actually tell by their fairly rigid shape there, the regular shape, and the fact they're green and have got chloroplasts in. And this one was taken through a light microscope. Mm. These are bacteria, and this was an electron microscope. This, I believe, is a bed bug or a flea. Unbelievable magnification in detail. And that is taken through an electron. And this is, I think, a pollen grains. And once again, look at the unbelievable detail there, the clarity. And that all comes down to the ability not only to magnify, but to have a very resol high resolving power, which we're going to cover. So, electron microscope and light microscope. Well, what do they look like? Well, there they are. Uh, we can see on the left a light microscope, which works, just for our information, by light being beamed up through a sample, which is very, very thin, so light is able to pass through it. It travels up the objective lens and then through the eye lens and then to an eye that is looking in. And the way that we calculate magnification for a light microscope is whatever's on the eye lens, which is for us usually times 10, multiplied by whatever's on the objective lens. Now for us that might be 4, which would be a total magnification of 40, uh, or it could be 40 on the objective lens. And if it was 40 on the objective lens, the total magnification you multiply together is 400 times, fairly straightforward. It's believed that a light microscope can go up to about 1500 times in terms of making something. What does magnification mean? Well, it means making it bigger. You can make something seem appear 1500 times bigger than it is. Now, an electron microscope over here, well, this is a different kettle of fish. It can magnify up to about one million times, which is quite incredible. And the way that a, a electron microscope works is instead of using light to pass through a sample, it, one, the machine uses loads and loads of tiny electrons which are bombarded either through or onto a very specially prepared specimen. Um, which gives, from the scattering of the electrons, a, a shape that one can see. And there are two types. There's transmission uh, electron microscopes and scanning electron microscopes. And the difference between them is, is whether the electrons go partially or fully through the sample, or whether they just bounce off and give a, a pattern which you can see the image with. So electron microscopes are hugely more effective in terms of magnification. And the other thing one can say about them is that, look at, look at the state of that, it's massive, it's a big piece of kit, it's state-of-the-art, it's going to be very, very expensive too. So light microscope is very, very good for us because we can afford them, we can pick them up, we can move them, and we can use them. We don't need any true expertise. The other thing about electron microscopes and light microscopes is that if you are going to prepare a sample for an electron microscope, you need to very, very carefully prepare it so when electrons hit it, the electrons move off and do what you want them to do to give you an image. That requires very specialist preparation. And the first thing to say about that is that unfortunately all the samples are going to be dead. They're often kept in a vacuum, they might be, they might be coated in a, in a metal, um, which is very good for electrons bouncing and things. And so you're not able to look at live specimens with an electron microscope. But with a light microscope, we know that we could get some pond water, we could put a cover slip on, and we could look down the microscope, and you can see living organisms underneath the light microscope. And that's a very big advantage. 
But the disadvantage is we can only see them to a certain magnification. Whereas if you look at these images that we saw earlier, these are incredible. The magnification could be up to a million times. So I've actually referred to uh, a couple of terms here, um, which are resolution and magnification. So we could actually look here and try and work out which of the objects that we see in the world around us, or don't see as the case may be, might be visible with our eyes, a light microscope or an electron microscope. And we can see here on this diagram, which is quite nice, that we have anything up to about this level here, which is roughly around the, um, a hair molecule or strand, is going to be visible with the naked eye. A light microscope takes us down to just a little smaller than a bacteria, and then an electron microscope takes us all the way to things as small as biological molecules. It says an atom here, and that is incredibly small. But so we can see here that our eyes are fantastic at seeing the things around us that we need to see to survive, other people, uh, food, predators, whatever it may be. But once we get down to a cellular level, we've got the red blood cell here, and going smaller, we actually need a light microscope or an electron microscope. So in terms of the differences between an electron microscope and a light microscope, in order to do this, we need to actually very carefully define two terms. The first is resolution. resolution and this is the ability to distinguish between two points and if I try and show you what I mean here if I take a line there and then I take a line there it's very easy for us with our eyes to be able to distinguish between those two lines that means we can resolve those two pieces of detail we can if you resolve an argument you sort the argument out so we can sort those two lines into their separate lines very easily. But what happens if I was to get another line and put it much closer? Well actually we can still resolve that quite easily. What about if I now put another one there? Can you see I've overlapped that? So if we look at these two lines that I've just put there, the question is, is that those two lines that I've done there are they touching or not? And up here, it's difficult to say. We look as, it looks to us as if there's just one line there. But if we were to magnify that, we might in fact see again two lines that are separated because we've, we've magnified and resolved it with something like a light microscope. And we can go further and further and further into more detail and still see their two points. So a light microscope, if we looked at those two lines I did earlier, might say that they are still apart. And if we looked at an electron microscope, the electron microscope might have them that far apart because it can resolve right down to incredible detail. So resolution is about detail and it's about how far apart the lines can be before you can separate them as two separate lines. Eye, pretty good. Line microscope, very good. Electron microscope, superb. And we can kind of see this, can't we? If, we? if we go back to these diagrams, if you see these chloroplasts and the cell wall of these cells in the line microscope, can you see that they are actually it gives us a shape, doesn't it? We can't really say exactly what those chloroplasts are like. They just look like circles to us. And the edge of the cell wall is just lines. Um, there's some other kind of faint, blurred imagery in there. That's because the light microscope doesn't have the magnification nor the resolution to show the detail on the surface. But look at these pollen grains here on the left. Look at the detail that we have. You can see every individual spike. You can see little lines on the individual. Uh, they look like 
Walnuts there, unbelievable detail, and that's because they're such a high resolution. You can distinguish in that photo between individual points very clearly. So, if we take, say, one of those pollen grains with the spikes on, we can see every spike. If that was under a light microscope, you wouldn't see any of the spikes, you would just see a blob. And so, you'd see a blob, but you wouldn't be able to distinguish between the two points of the spikes, and so you can't see detail. So, that is resolution. Now, the other one we need to know about is much more straightforward, in fact, um, and it's one that we really know well, which is, my, which is magnification. And magnification simply means making bigger. So with magnification, it's how much bigger have we made it. If we've got something that big and then we make it that big, how much bigger have we made it? Well, maybe about 10 times 10. And so therefore, Magnification is simply how much bigger we have made it. And so they are two key points of the differences that electron microscopes and light microscopes have. In terms of uh, the other differences we need to know, well, I've touched upon most of them, in fact. It's the, the expense, how easy they are to use, the fact that slides have to be dead for an electron microscope and they can be living in a light microscope. The magnification and resolution of an electron microscope is, is very, very big, and a light microscope is, is okay, but, uh, but not that great. Um, certainly good compared to our eyes, but not that good compared to an electron microscope. And of course, there's a huge amount of cost involved in those two. So that is an introduction to the light and electron microscope. But do remember two key terms of magnification, making bigger, and resolution is the ability to distinguish between two points. If you can't distinguish between them, they seem like one, and that gives a blurred lack of detail.